it gives me a lot of information regarding what's going on there because it provides real-time uh, video feed and I don't have to put an officer right in front of the place, so it's a, quite an advantage having this. A really skilled um, sniper or somebody who's trained a lot can almost match that. But introduce a bit of stress, a bit of heat, a bit of cold, a bit of fatigue. They're downhill and this thing is just um, it's unbeatable. What if we could build a system to help police developing nations? What if it could be rebuilt and improved upon? This is the statement made by Canadian AID unit developer Tetraval in their 2005 AID unit promotional video. AID units, or artificial intelligence defense units, are based around the idea of replacing the human officer or soldier with a repairable and upgradable robotic unit. It looks like something out of a science fiction movie. But AID units have been in development for decades and only very recently have seen production. One of the biggest drawbacks of the AID unit has always been trying to fit enough memory into the machine to be able to store all of the AI algorithms while still being small enough so that this unit's data can be surrounded by a thick enough material to protect the unit's central data storage without weighing the machine down. The rapidly increasing development of large data storage has finally fixed this problem among AID unit development. The modern AID unit's central data storage system holds around 150 terabytes of memory consisting of the most complex and intricate programming in history created by a team of over 300 programmers. Kojima and many other programmers of the Central Tokyo AID Unit AI project had finally finished the final version of AI code near the end of 2003. After many confined tests, it was a short matter of time until a prototype was made and tested in the field. The AID Unit had been effective in every new situation and location among the world it had been placed. The artificial intelligence program could not have run smoother, and the unit was the most efficient member of the team according to police officers and soldiers alike. A witness of the AID unit's participation in the suppression of a riot in France was particularly affected by the unit's performance. He asked for his identity to be concealed. There was chaos and smoke from tear gas everywhere. It was late at night and all I could see were the black shields of police officers. Although I could hear quite clearly. I could hear the sounds of people screaming in anger, the sound of glass shattering and pots of more tear gas grenades going off. I was trying to run away, get out of the mess, and just as I turned the corner of the cafe, I saw it. It stood at least seven feet tall and had an automatic weapon in its hand. I was with my friend and we started to run, but then it raised its weapon and In the 2004 document report of a production subsidiary of the Tetraval Corporation, there will be a projected 1,000 AID units in effect by the year 2010, and by 2025 the countries that are financially capable will completely remove all human defense elements. More than 200 units are already in production according to Jason Danfer, chief spokesman for Tetraval. Will the AID units completely replace the human officer? One can only wait and see.